we want to find all of the zeros or roots of the given degree three polynomial function. To start, we want to find the rational zeros of the function. The possible rational zeros of this function would come from the ratio of the factors of the constant term, which is negative sixteen, to the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is just one. So let's start by listing the factors of negative sixteen. And then we'll list the factors of one. And then we'll look at the ratios that we can form from these factors. So the factors of negative sixteen are the numbers that would divide evenly into negative sixteen. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight, and plus or minus sixteen. And the factors of one, of course, are just plus or minus one. So if we look at all the possible ratios of the factors of negative sixteen to the factors of positive one, we can see the possible rational zeros would just be the factors of negative sixteen. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight, and plus or minus sixteen. Now what we could do is just try all these values into the original function and see which of these make the function equal to zero. But instead of doing this trial and error process, I prefer to take a look at the graph of the function. Remember, we're looking for the values of x that make this function equal to zero, or the x values where y would be equal to zero. That means that the x-intercepts of this function would be the real zeros of the function. So, so let's look at the graph of this function. We can see right away this function only has one x-intercept right here at positive four, which means the function would only have one real rational zero here at positive four. The other two zeros would be complex or imaginary zeros. So right now we know one of our zeros is x equals positive four. The next thing to remember is if x equals four is a zero, then x minus four would have to be a factor of this degree three polynomial, which means you can rewrite the function as f of x equals a factor of x minus four. Notice how this is degree one, so the remaining factor would have to be a degree two factor. And to find this factor, we can divide the original polynomial by x minus four, or perform synthetic division using x equals four. Let's go ahead and perform synthetic division. So we're gonna use a four here, then we're gonna list the coefficients of our polynomial, which are one, negative four, four and negative sixteen. Remember, because we're saying x minus four is a factor, when we perform the synthetic division, the remainder must be zero. If it's not, we've made a mistake. So to perform synthetic division now, we bring the one down, multiply by four, four times one is four, we add, this is zero, multiply by four, well zero times four is zero, we add, multiply by four, four times four is sixteen, and our remainder is zero, which is good. So now we've confirmed that four is a zero of the function algebraically as well as graphically, but the results of this also gives us the remaining factor of our polynomial function. We started with a degree three polynomial, we divided by a degree one polynomial, therefore our quotient would be a degree two polynomial, so this is the coefficient of the x squared term, so our factor is one x squared, or x squared, plus zero x, which we can leave out, plus four, and again the remainder is zero. So these are the two factors of the original polynomial. Now we can find the remaining two complex zeros by finding the zeros of this factor here, since we already found the zero of this factor. So now we're gonna set x squared plus four equal to zero and solve. This is not factorable, so we could use the quadratic formula, but because we only have an x squared term, we can isolate the x squared and then square root both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and subtract four on both sides. So we have x squared equals negative four. So now we square root both sides of the equation. So we'll have x equals Remember, we'll have two solutions here, so we have plus or minus the square root of, to show this, I can write negative four as negative one times two times two. 
So x is equal to plus or minus, well the square root of negative one is i, the square root of two times two, the square root of four is two, so we have x equals plus or minus two i, so our remaining two zeros are imaginary. So our zeros are x equals four, x equals two i, and x equals negative two i, which often we just write as plus or minus two i. So these are the zeros of the given degree three polynomial function. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.